say that uh, programming Fantastic Fest is not a one-woman job. Uh, we have a team of programmers and uh, they help us put this program together. And it's not just me and I would like to call please the programmers of Fantastic Fest, Lori, there's Anna, there's Austin, Jean, who handles the shorts, Shannon, Baron, short film, and then we have Peter Kuklowski who handles the front end uh, section. Thank you very much. And now we're gonna go to the main event. Um, we're really, really thrilled to, to be able to present this movie tonight. And a uh, huge thanks to Prime Video and Blumhouse Television for gifting us with uh, Totally Killer. It's really funny, it's slasher, time travel movie, and uh, when we saw it, we decided that it had to close Fantastic Fest, but because it would put us in the perfect mood uh, to end the festival. Um, I'm going to call our director, I don't know if those killers over there are going to do anything, but <laughs> let's call down director Nanachka Khan. to close out Fantastic Fest with you all. Uh, amazing vibes, great movies. Just thank you for having us. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm so thrilled to be here. Thank you, Killers. Um, thank you, we have some of the crew here. Obviously the cast couldn't be here, although they want to. Hopefully SAG gets what they want soon and everything gets resolved. Um, I'm gonna come back after. We're gonna have a little uh, Q and A, so I'll talk to you guys more afterwards. But just we had a blast making this movie. Uh, I hope you have a blast watching it, and um, you know, get your popcorn or a big alcohol and uh, enjoy it because it's a wild, fun ride. So thank you all for being here. And wait, 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 because we have you have masks, I believe, on your tables. Please put them on. We're gonna do a little picture. Yes. Guys, let me get everybody to stand up. 
Exactly. So, what what attracted you to the script? Is it something that uh, you had uh, that just like basically fell on your lap, or was it uh, was it sent to you by a producer? Yeah, it was sent to me by Blumhouse and you know Jason and his team, and um, it was a thing where we wanted to work together. We knew we wanted to find something together. We didn't know what it was, and then Sasha, who's here, and her partner David uh, wrote this amazing script, and it kind of just all worked out timing wise, you know. And it was such a great premise, and then. Jen D'Angelo came on, who's also here, and the rewrite, so yeah, kind of, it was like, it was such a fun challenge, it, you know, it felt like the right thing. Was it always like a, a, a mix between slash and comedy, or was it more serious at some point? It was always going to be a mix, for sure, you know, but I think, for me, it's just, I, I just, that's what I do is comedy, so I wanted to make sure that it was, you know, delivering on that level, and kind of that both things could coexist uh, in that same space. Uh, do we have, because I want to open up also to the audience, do we have questions in the audience? Yes, so please short questions, because I have to repeat them for the auto theaters. Go ahead, in the back there. And um, was the, uh, did you did purposely try to move, um, to differentiate from the final girls? Did you try to separate, separate you from the final girls? Yeah, because of the madness of that movie. Oh, the meta-ness of the final world. Yeah, I think, you know, which was a great movie. It's funny, that movie, I think, played more like uh, Last Action Hero was that reference, where she gets sucked into a slasher. And I think for us, it was much more Back to the Future being our kind of tunnel reference point. So that was our kind of guiding light in this movie. Another question? Yes, in red over there. Uh, for me, this feels a lot like the 2011 movie Detention, but that was kind of a 90s time travel high school horror slasher movie. Just curious, I mean, if that was at any point that that was thought about, or it was completely just different. Like, Feel, feels like a 2011 detention, detention. movie called Detention. Uh, was there? Is it like? Uh, a reference or no no I think you know luckily like uh, we have like a lot of uh, different eras that we could go back to but I think like that was a great movie and I think you know this for us just felt like we wanted to reference uh, Back to the Future a lot but also the idea of uh, this like Gen Z kid just sort of coming into the 80s and not really knowing how to traffic in that <laughs> environment for us was like a real fun kind of touch point uh, tell us about the casting, especially uh, Kieran Shipka. She's amazing. She's amazing. She plays it so grounded. I love Kiernan. I love everything that she's, you know, been in. So she was the perfect person to play Jamie because she kind of really grounded the movie in a way. And you always felt like that mom death that she carries with her. Uh, so it's like you're having fun, whatever. You're in the 80s. She's dealing with all the stuff. There's serial killer on the loose. But she's, you know, playing the comedy and the horror and sort of just keeping it grounded. and. She's, you know, a legend, a legend at 23. I was always uh, uh, Lockley in Monroe. It was it was funny to actually see him in here because I mean we've seen him on TV and all that, but he hasn't really ever really had a big part. Uh, did you know him before? 
I didn't know him before. I mean, obviously, you know, him and Karen have that connection. Um, but I think like there's something weirdly, I don't know if it's because like he looks sweet or something, but there's something weirdly sinister about him to me. So I liked that when he appeared, he could potentially be a red hair, you know, cause you're trying to populate the movie too. Like who could it possibly be? And uh, to me, it's like, when I see his face, I'm like, he's a, you know, he's a potential suspect. Like, Other questions? Yes, over here. Um, every good, you know, mask killer needs a good mask. What was your design process and the inspiration for, for this one? Was the, sorry, okay. The, the design of the, of the killer's mask. The design of the killer's mask, yes. Yeah, so that's something that we really, you know, because it, it obviously has to take place in the 80s, you know, when it was like generated, but this town is known for these kills that happened 35 years earlier, so I wanted to feel relevant, so like nostalgic, but also relevant in present day, because people are still feeling, dressing up like this guy, so. Uh, I worked with Tony Gardner, who's designed a bunch of masks, and his company, Alterian, who's amazing. And um, we were talking about what that could be and how do we make it feel different. And the idea of like a handsome man being terrifying was really interesting. So we started to pull like 80s heartthrob references. So we pulled like, you know, Schieffer Sutherland and Rob Lowe and Dolph Lundgren, and you know, like that we got given an earring, like Lost Boys vibe, and sort of like tried to get like a little bit of fun in there too and just made his like and then exaggerated those features like his teeth is too big and you know like that kind of thing and just a smiling man stabbing you <laughs> uh, <laughs> smiling blonde man um so a photo booth as a time machine and then later on uh, uh an arcade game uh that's very imaginative so how how did how did the screenwriters get the idea I mean, that's a great question. I think uh, <laughs> you have to ask them. I mean, what I liked about it was I liked the nostalgia thing. I liked that it felt like DIY enough that this girl could be working on this as part of a science, you know, fair. I mean, you have to, you know, sort of buy in to the idea that in any time travel movie that it's possible. And so combining that with like a lo-fi device, I think was a nice sort of just aesthetic for us because it felt like real you know like it felt like real heightened you know so it wasn't like electrodes being hooked up to what I, like how is this girl gonna get this so i liked that and i also liked the gravitron being something that they discover you know as a way to get back just because like that is very 80s and that's like one of those like it feels lawless in there because it's one of the few rides that you're not strapped in at all there's no harness there's no belt and you're just kind of free except that gravity is keeping you there and it just felt kind of 80s and that lawlessness I mean, you do you do ask a lot of the audience to suspend the disbelief in in the fact that Amelia is just like this genius and just she actually just creates a time machine. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, you want to just be like, yeah. I mean, so just and I like the idea that her mom in the past is like, you don't try to invent time travel without you know ex expecting that people are going to come back to ask you you know for your help. So I think we wanted to have that we wanted to acknowledge it, but we also wanted to kind of move past it in a way that it feels like somebody in 2023 with those reference points would do. So she's trying to talk about, you know, <laughs> seeing um, uh, Back to the Future and Scream and like all those, you know, like the Avengers Endgame and, you know, as opposed to like her being like a scientist suddenly and trying to like break it down. She's you know, using her reference points, I guess. Uh, there was a question. Yes, in the back there. Can you talk about the look of the film? For a slasher film, it's extremely vibrant and colorful. Can you talk about the look of the film because it's very vibrant for a slasher film? Yeah, so I wanted to feel like it was, you know, kind of a light space. And I wanted it to feel connected, like the present day to the 80s and that aesthetic to sort of come through. So not to feel moody necessarily, but like when a violent, terrible thing happens in a brighter setting, I think that can be like, a, you know, that can throw you off, I think in a cool way, as opposed to like, uh oh, something's about to come, something's about to happen. So kind of steering away a little bit from the moodiness um, and letting it kind of play into the light, you know, was a fun thing for us. And then we don't have to shift gears quite so much when we go back and forth between the two timelines. When you got the script and it started and you felt like, oh, this is going to the 80s, did you have a moment where you rolled your eyes thinking, oh, yes, another 80s movies, retro? Yeah, well, that was the thing. Like, we didn't want to go back to the 80s and suddenly it's like a, you know, Duran Duran video, right? So it's like, we don't want that to be the joke. So it's like, all right, we're in the 80s, we're here, but the people who are living in that time in our movie uh, believe that that's where they are. You know, like, they're not 
heightened in that way. Like they're not playing a caricature like us as filmmakers looking back at the 80s. So that shouldn't be the joke, you know? So it was sort of taking the fun of the way things were handled in the 80s and just, you know, letting yeah, it Yeah, and, 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 and I think you did this brilliantly because ultimately it's not about you know, the 80s itself. It's just about the, the characters and their behaviors and that, those times. That's right, yeah, and the connection to the present day and, you know, the fun of nobody giving a shit back then <laughs> and just like <laughs> letting you, letting it ride. So we have time for one last question. Anyone? Yes, over here. Were there, uh, were there any elements from your personal experience with the 80s that you may have just incorporated in this that weren't necessarily on the page? Did you insert any elements, personal elements from the 80s um, that were not on the page? I mean, I did escape a slasher in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I was able to live to tell the tale. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I think really it was that um, just that people had no kind of uh, PC filter uh, and that was just accepted, you know, from teachers to like the sheriff of the small town, you know, forget about like your like peers in high school, you know what I mean? So I think like that to me was something that you sort of, that stays with you. And so uh, to kind of put this that in this movie was fun for me. Well, thank you so much for being here. Guys, thank you so much thank you for so much. gifting us.